All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, as I'm recording this, we are going to be rocking out with a new doc. And uh, I guess I'm referring to a doctor. Uh, before I jump into that, I just want to remind you guys, uh, all the loyal listeners to Live Fuel, thank you for your dedication. Thank you for sharing your episodes. And if you are uh, turning newbies on to this show and all of our amazing guest co-hosts, make sure you get them to get us some new reviews on iTunes. Because yes, if you want to understand the podcast world a little bit more, that still matters. And also, I just like to hear people's opinions so I can share them on the show. So that being said, that's it. I'm going to jump right in here, ladies and gentlemen. We've got another new guest co-host. I hinted this is going to be a little bit more of a business theme. I, I, we're going to talk a lot about lifestyle too. We might even talk a little about some neuroscience. Yeah, there's a key word for you with your Google searching. So let's, uh, let me give a little more of a bio on this guy. Digital marketing agency owner. Uh, the, only, the, the tip of the iceberg with him is just the neuroscience little thing that I threw in here, the doctor thing. But we're going to give you a little bit more here. He's a PhD, published neuroscience researcher, right? But I'm not done yet. He's also, because he got bored, a seventh degree black belt in Kung Fu and has been teaching and training for over 30 years, people, with a 300-person school at good old Austin, Texas. I've been there a few times, big old Texas. Uh, so for people from over in Europe and other areas we have listening to the show, you got to go visit because I've been to Austin many times and it's all right. Uh, but not to go there in the summertime. <laughs> it gets a little hot. So anyway, this gentleman brings all of his mastery and skill to the table with each of his clients as he guides, transforms, and educates them on digital marketing. So without further ado, I hinted about it. He's got a doctor in front of his name, Joe Schaefer. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, man. It's great to be here. So we'll go ahead and drop the doc off, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. How long have you been? How long have you been a doc? So from the beginning, uh, you it on later. I've been since 1997. That's when I got my doctorate. Mm, okay, so I wonder how we might be close in age. I graduated high school in '95, so I was, oh, no. I was in no. school '95 and '99. I got my doctorate in '97, but I graduated high school in '83. Okay, then maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Well, I, I can tell you right now, I look like I have way more salt and pepper than you do, sir. So you're doing something. <laughs> well, I'll get closer. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm baby faced. I'm lucky. So uh, obviously, the 30 years of Kung Fu, right? I mean, that's, that's a long time. That's a few years, yeah. You might actually care about that a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if it's that or I just don't know how to quit. <laughs> well, we don't really like the word quit on this show. So you are yes. clearly symbolizing that for 30 years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, <clears throat> it's true. I, I don't know how, you know, you, you, you start a form and you keep going until you reach the end of that kata or whatever like that. And then you start another kata and you pretty soon as 30 years later. Yeah, let's jump. Let me geek out about that a little bit because I, I actually studied a little show and rue when I was young. I did not stick with it for 30 years like you have, sir. So you are uh, you have a lot of respect for me. Uh, but I do still connect to this day back to what I learned because I, I started learning uh, later. I mean, I, I actually highly recommend people start if you can get your kids involved. You know, when they're young, I think it's great for form formation, for uh, for dedication, for just giving them all around great structure. Or in my parents' case, it's a great way to get your kid uh, whacked with a bamboo stick when he's not listening. <laughs> so it's another form of parenting, at least when I was growing up. <laughs> I don't know. Is that, is that is that still allowed? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> well, how do you guys roll? <laughs> no, we don't usually roll with the bamboo stick, but uh, okay. I mean, a lot of the parents do bring them in and say, "Discipline my kid." The thing yeah. is, is that uh, if we really did, if we were the only place that kid found discipline, they wouldn't be able to drag their own kid to the class anymore because they can't discipline their own kid. Mm. So, <laughs> Interesting. So it just doesn't work well in this uh, current environment. Okay. So is it, has all 30 years been obviously there in Texas? Uh, no, it was um, – well, I, I started studying – I'm from Indiana. Okay. And I uh, – I studied in a little town there, a little school that opened up. And then I went and studied with the grandmaster of our style. He was in Lexington, Kentucky. And then I moved to Texas and started a little club down here just to pay for his airfare. So he would come down and test them and keep teaching me. Nice. And uh, it started with just, a, you know, five or six guys at a, a sports club on, on the university of Texas. And, you know, now I've, I built nine schools eventually. And uh, I've, taught thousands of people. So now I got about three or 400 people in the school. 
I'm oh, sorry, you did just say nine schools, right? Yeah, yeah. Are the nine schools still going? They are, but I turned them all over to, you know, I tried to run it from a distance and help them. I kind of partnered up with people who were wanted to open a school, yeah. but realized pretty quickly I was a much better martial arts teacher than a manager. <laughs> uh, and as soon as I sold or gave them their school, depending on whether it was making a dime or not, uh, now suddenly it started doing better, of course, when they were in charge because, uh, you know, they were a little more vested in it, right? Oh, yeah. I, I see. Um, I'm a huge CrossFitter, and uh, I'm also a CFL1 trainer, and I've, I've held a lot of other fitness certs over the years. I've been a ski race coach for youth, youth teams and everything else. So I, I, I get that, right? Like everybody's like, oh man, you, uh, I, I recently was offered ownership in a CrossFit facility. And I was, I told my friends, I was like, you know, thank you for the honor of offering me that. But one, I don't want a brick and mortar business. I'm online. Mm -hmm. And two, I, if, and when I feel like coaching or I want to coach, I want to focus just on that, right? I don't want to be running that business. I already have other businesses yeah. I'm running. <laughs> no, so it sounds, it sounds like you eventually learned that lesson yourself. Yeah, it took a long time to, you know, when you, you've got someone and you're, you're introducing them, that's their very first class, they're all excited, you're, you're, you're coaching them, mm -hmm. you're going to become their mentor, it's kind of a silent contractor entering into where I care about what happens to you and you're going to listen to me and then you go, uh, now let's go to over here and let's sign this, this agreement, you know, okay. you know, making that little <laughs> trip across the floor over to the counter where it now becomes this a business deal man, that killed me for years. I, I just almost couldn't speak during that part because I felt it was so d I dirty that, you know? Yeah, I can remember. It's funny. Now you're talking about this. I haven't, really, I haven't even thought about that interaction or experience in years. And now you're saying that, I can remember that. I remember my sensei was never behind the counter. Like yeah. the, the owner of the dojo, I mean, and he had, you know, other senseis under him and everything else. He was, I mean, back when I was training there, he was only a third degree. I think he became a fifth or a sixth before he closed the school, and his father was a grandmaster. Uh -huh. And, um, uh, again, this was in the show in Ruart, not the, the – Right, the, right. So I was more Japanese. Yours is tied to – Chinese? It, it is more Chinese. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's been a few debates on that. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last time I checked, it was Chinese. So uh, – so, I'm just intrigued by this backstory because obviously you've got something bigger you do these days, right? You're, you're a fellow marketing nut like me, right? Mm -hmm. You, your brand nowadays is known as motility. And uh, I love that because I'm very big into mobility. And right. I was actually, I was just at my client's office today and every Friday now she has her sister who became a yoga instructor come up and teach yoga, uh, just to, wow. to the employees and everything else. So I, I drop in and, we do a quick yoga session out in the warehouse uh, outside of our office <laughs> and it's super fun and super different and it's adds nice balance. And everybody's always like, man, why are you so flexible? And right. I said, honestly, I can thank my youth and martial Ooh. arts training, the, the level of flexibility and now mobility that right. I have acquired. I, my, my muscle memory never, never forgot it. Yeah, that's true. I, I remember I had this student, he was in his, you know, now I'm in my fifties, but he was in his fifties. I wasn't yet. And he was getting ready to test for his fourth degree black belt. And those forms are just, they kill, they kill you when you t take a test. They're so aerobically horrible. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're down low and kicking high and jumping through the air. And he said, man, I got to quit. This is killing my knees. And uh, I'm just never going to be who I wanted to be. And I said, well, you know, can you put your foot up on top of your refrigerator cold and stretch? Mm -hmm. He said, well, yeah. I said, well, who else who's 50 years old can do that? Mm. You know, he's worked at Motorola at the time. I said, what about your co coworkers? He goes, well, they've all had their first heart attack by now. Yeah. And I said, well, you're complaining because you wished you could do more, but look, you can. You already do more forward. than most people in their twenties, my friend. You just said he exactly. was 50, right? Exactly. What's that? You said he's 50? Yeah, he was 50, 53 or 54 at the time. Yeah, yeah. Drop, drop the mic for this guy. I'm, I'm, and for people listening, instead of watching the video, like I'm literally – I am not dropping my mics, they're too expensive. But if I had one that was like a, a foam yeah. one, I'd drop it for this guy. Fifty years old, yeah, can can, can put his foot on top of a refrigerator still, yeah. and he's worried about his knees hurting and wishes he could do more. <laughs> yeah. uh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is just giving up by then, right? You're just not even testing it anymore. So obviously, uh, I mean, how did that coaching go? I mean, what did he ended up coming out of that with? Well, he ended up moving somewhere else. So it's a great story. But, yeah, he ended up not, not continuing because of that. But, you know, in my school, we've got 
I've got a, I got a guy who just tested for fifth degree black belt. He's 70 years old. Wow. Uh, you know, he can't do what everybody else can do, but he can, he's out there. He works out about 10 hours a week in my school. So. Wow. Okay. You know, everybody thinks of martial arts as for kids, but two thirds of my students are, are adults. So. No, I do remember that. I mean, I think when I was younger in my teens, uh, cause I think I stopped when I turned like 18, 19, cause I was, I was working full time to pay my sure. way through, pay my way through school and everything else. I was like, yeah, I, like, how, where am I going to find it? I could have, to be fair, I could have found a way to make some time. Uh, <laughs> the priorities had shifted, but yeah. I still tell people all the time, I can thank a lot of my business acumen, my lifestyle dedication, maybe my, uh, some people like to call it professional OCD, whatever, to a lot of that structure that I learned. Uh, so, so with motility, right? So your, your, your agency, yeah. did that, yeah. obviously that came later. Did, were you originally entrepreneurially focused on the dojos? Were you doing both? What's up with that? Yeah. So after I got my doctorate, well, actually right, right at the end of that, that journey, I had a school of about 200 people at the time okay. and I went to my academic advisor and said, Hey, it was like the worst moment of my life at that point, because I had to tell basically my academic father, I'm not going into the family business. Ooh. You know, I don't. I have no interest in going into science. Uh, and so I, I finally got the nerve, told him that. He was happy for me. His kids even joined my school. I mean, you know, you always, you always imagine it's going to be much worse than, than it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I saw, and actually real quick for the video watchers, I want to make sure I got yes. a little screen sharing in. So, uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you can find this guy all over LinkedIn. Uh, just look for, don't just look for Joe Schaefer, look for the Dr. Joe Schaefer. It will bring him up a lot faster. Uh, but you have it right in your bio there. It's an amazing combination. Yeah. That's why I'm doing the screen share because I love it. It's like, yeah. okay, you're the founder of Motility. That's easy. Okay, internet marketing solved. Marketing strategist, love that. I'm very big into strategy. But then right there is your doctorate of neurophysiology and then seventh degree black belt kung fu and tai chi master. So if you couldn't have asked for a better unique combination <laughs> conundrum of skill sets. <laughs> well, and you know, to be honest, Scott, uh, for years I kept that the kung fu part completely off there and hidden because I thought it was such a non sequitur, right? Is it that, that I'm just going to confuse people. But it's such a part of me that I finally just embraced it and said, you know, I end up talking to a lot of my business clients and saying, they're saying, well, hey, we got to do some SEO. And I'll basically say, you know, that's like a brown belt technique and you're like a blue belt right now. Let's figure out who you are first before we do that. So I finally just gave up and said, you know, I can't escape it. It's me. Uh, that strategy is a part of not just a strategy, but that progressive training, right? That you remember. I, you know, I love where you're going with this uh, because. Number one, you're tying together really your lifestyle and where and basically a huge component of your foundation and you're mm -hmm. tying it directly into what, how this actually helps you make your agency and how you talk to your clients more unique Right. because the average strategist is not referencing the, the <laughs> color, color ranking of a martial arts belt. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, now, you know, do you, you talk like that when it comes to the neurophysiology component too? Because you kind of hinted here earlier that you kind of did not follow the family lineage, but you have the yeah. knowledge. <laughs> well, you know, every, every day uh, I'm using some aspect of neuroscience as I'm looking at data and I'm trying to, you know, I use, you know, you don't know if you heard of the principal Occam's razor. It's the, yes. you know, I use that every day in my marketing world because business owners are very biased by their own thoughts and their own words and their own, and by saying, look, that's not the simplest explanation here. Uh, here's why people are bouncing off of this page and leaving your site <laughs> is because, you know, your site sucks or whatever that is. Uh, you know, drilling down and, 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 and understanding, just like in martial arts, you make a mistake in martial arts, you get hit in the head. Yeah. So Especially it, if you're in a kumite a tournament. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> so it doesn't really matter how it looks. It, what matters is does it work? And so I'm very much that utilitarian guy in martial art or in, in marketing. And it came, so, I think martial arts, go ahead. So real quick for the listeners, even though I just, I went ahead and just nodded. Yeah, sure. I totally understand Occam's razor. Let's define that for them. So how do you, uh, let, let's get a nice simple understanding on this. Cause I think that's a very powerful thing that you're able to integrate yeah. that most agencies that I've you know networked with don't understand that. Yeah. And, and so the, the definition of it basically is that if you're trying to understand what, one thing causes another thing or how it's related. You can come up with multiple different theories about how that may be, those relations may be, but the simplest one is the one you must assume is correct. Uh, 
until you find data otherwise. And so you always fall upon the simplest explanation and that's Occam's razor. Okay. And for ladies and gentlemen that are listening, if you ever want to Google this, because uh, this guy knows a few things about Google, by the way, we'll get into that. Uh, <laughs> but O-C-C-A-M, and you can throw in a posture if you want to, S, and then Razor, R-A-Z-O-R. So there's your official spelling. We'll have this linked in your show notes. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and make sure that our, uh, our VA tags the, the little bio on it, and, and we'll probably pull it out of Wikipedia or one of the, actually, probably more of a legitimate site. I don't like tagging Wikipedia too much. Uh, except for Google purposes. <laughs> so, so do you find yourself using it all the time or is it just kind of randomly? You know, it's, it's a, it, so I'm a big fan of, of disciplines that a path that you follow. Right. And so at PhD, you can't get a PhD without being disciplined in Occam's razor because it's a part of your world. Right. Right. So, you know, you come out the other end of that machine, they crank the meat grinder and you go through your oral qualifying exams and then you go through your dissertation, your proposal and your defense and all those steps produce a scientist that mm-hmm. thinks a certain way. Uh, and so you can't really escape it. Same with martial arts. You got your black belt, your second degree. By, by the time you're done, you kind of look like the other martial artists. True. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't walk in and say, let's use Occam's razor on this. I just, you know, that's, I couldn't escape it if I tried. It just flows naturally. Yeah, yeah. I just, it's the easiest explanation is what I will pick every time. Well, one thing that I kind of, I went and threw up here on uh, Merriam Webster's uh, online dictionary that I just got a kick out of was I forgot this keyword right here, uh, philosophical. So it's interesting how they they tie scientific and Mm. philosophical rule uh, because I actually, I studied when I, when I did my marketing background, I ended up falling in love with philosophy and psychology because I just started taking them on the side, like extra courses. And then every, yeah. and all of a sudden I started acing them and I was like, Oh, well, this is a great way to boost the GPA. <laughs> so I just kept, I just kept going. And I, I almost, I, I almost ended up doing a dual major. Right. The funny thing was I ended up falling in love with philosophy first, but then once I started dabbling in the psych, I ended up just really going for psychology. But I, I, I consider psychology more science and obviously philosophy not, but in this situation, according to that definition, they're really playing the balance of both. Now, so do you agree yeah. with what you did? Because you were just heavily emphasizing, you know, uh, methodology, following the rules, building a platform, you know, being more scientific. Yeah, I mean, you, as a, as a person who likes philosophy, you prob- you're probably a fan. I, I can kind of sense of stoicism and stoics, that whole philosophy. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's as much Occam's razor. You know, basically, you look at the world in a certain way as a stoic. That's, that's, that's I'm going to deal with what reality is and, and what I can't fix, I'm not going to worry about. And I'm going to fix myself every day in every way that I can. So, Yeah, I'm very big into self and professional development. I'm very big yeah. in living with what I can actually affect and I have reality. Uh, and actually, it's just an interesting thing that I, I usually cycle into most of the shows because it is a part of the Live the Fuel brand and why fires and logo. Uh, I, I left the corporate world a few years ago and served with the federal government as one of the elite hotshot wildland firefighters. So I only did that for two years. But... It was funny because when I was younger, I wanted nothing to do with the military. Right. But it's, it, this is tying together with everything you just said, right? So it's like, but then I go in my 30s and I go try and be these crazy, like one of the most dangerous jobs in the world, federal right. wild firefighters. And I show up and it's the most like structured, <laughs> disciplined, you know, disciplined programming. <laughs> like they, yeah. break, they break you down to build you up. And it doesn't, I mean, I'm actually considered the old guy on the crew. And because everybody's like 18 to like 20 yeah. to, you know, class, just like they do with the hiring in the military and right. I'm my squad bosses, but they don't care about your age. They don't care about my degree. Like, listen, dude, just uh, put your head down and dig in the dirt, bro. But we don't give a crap. Like your actions speak louder than words. Your ability to listen and execute on command speaks louder than anything else you could do. So it was a very, uh, <laughs> I would say a lot of that came from your martial art background too. I think you, you know, were probably introduced to it at that point probably yeah I, th- I think it helped without without me realizing it that's interesting because yeah. now see now you're gonna make me want to write another chapter for my new book uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> writing a book about the hot shot life uh and yeah. i'm gonna be, be donating all the proceeds to fallen firefighters but it's like i, I I'm, I'm editing it right now like i've already written it but then i keep stumbling across right. all these other ideas like <laughs> across it. and i never it's thought about going back to that amazing structure of martial arts man that's a good idea I'm writing it. <laughs> well, you better take a note on that one. But it's you're right, though. It's very true. I mean, you've been doing this for 30 years. I mean, yeah. 
we talk a lot about balancing health, business, and lifestyle, right, on this show. We're hitting on all of that right now. I mean, you're talking about this, this structure and this, and I, I love using the word foundation because I'm actually, I'm actually literally in the process of filing, filing paperwork with the federal government. I'm launching my first 501c3, and I'm going to oh. be using foundation in the branding. Instead of using charity, oh. I'm using foundations because I'm not trying to really do my own crazy fundraising. I keep finding myself helping other people launch their charities. <laughs> right. So, but then a lot of people never get around to doing it. So it's like, fine. I mean, I'll just provide myself like a, it's almost like a foundation as a service, right? It's like software gotcha. as a service. Cause I was like, I just, I'm tired of like people not getting crap done. You're so just like, going to facil facilitate. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Hey, you know what? I believe in you. I want to see you succeed. I I'm trying to help this kid who lives with cerebral palsy right now, launch his, we, we, we got yeah. him a bike, uh, a hand bike. We've raised money for it online and got him a bike and, He's just so busy. He's going to Penn State University right now, but he's in his late 20s. Uh, he grew up in Russia in this crazy, awful childhood. Kid's got an amazing story, but he's now he's like on the board of like five different charities that are not his. Uh, and wow. he wants to eventually launch his own. And I said, listen, John, I was like, when you're ready, I got your back. I was like, I'll help you raise the money. I'll help you file the paperwork. I'm sponsoring your, your fees with the government. But he just, he's so busy. He hasn't been able to get it done. So I say, like, fine. In the meantime, I'm going to get my foundation up. That way, if you keep doing your thing, I can at least support you. And then when you're ready to finally figure out how, to, how, you want, how you want to call your foundation, we'll get that going. So it's that structure. It's that form. It's that um, proven technique that I know I can help him execute on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Again, kind of form and technique, right? Tie back to kata. Uh, for yeah, I mean, yeah, listeners you, who don't know what a kata is, uh, yeah. I'll, let, I'll let the master here explain. Uh, well, it's like a prearranged sequence of moves that um, teach – it transmit the moves forward in time, right? So if I teach you my teach you the kata, it will have all the moves of that system in it. The blocks, the kicks, the punches, the traps, the sweeps, all those things. Mm -hmm. And it's and, it's it's it takes a long. I mean, I remember it takes a long time to master just one kata because uh, yeah. you're constantly being reevaluated, and there's always going to be those. There's so many little things. I remember it's not just the big movements; it's the small movements. It's the the control, the speed. Uh, I don't know. Is it the same with Kung Fu as well? Obviously you're looking at all it that. Is, the focus is different. You know, you sure. And you, you're probably really precise and very, uh, it was, yeah, it was uh, very, very, yeah. Kung Fu's <laughs> more like in justifies the means. I mean, look, you Scott, there's a, there's a drunken form where after you kick somebody, yeah. After you throw the kick, you grab your foot, like you hurt your foot. And then you throw another kick. Oh, so can you imagine seeing that in a sure new form? Right. You would never. That's, so you, yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> you lean over and go, oh, like you hurt your foot. But yeah. it's because, you know, at some point someone said, hey, this works pretty good. It tricks them and then you kick them in the head, you know. That's, that's so, a good point, right? That's true. It, yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very functional. <laughs> and it's funny you bring, you said the word drunken, right? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I have heard the terms of drunken kung fu versus traditional. Yeah. So yeah. it's interesting. Now, I've never had anybody explain it to me before. Well, yeah, drunken, you're just basically, you look like you're off balance, but you've been practicing looking off balance. Nice. So it looks I, like you can't throw that kick, but you've been practicing that kick. I like it. I like yeah. it. It, throw, it throws, yeah. off, throws everybody off the game. They think they got the confidence and they think they got you and then bam, exactly. you come right back at them. So you're, right. the, foot, the foot never gets put down for rebalancing. You have that much core strength, stability. Right, you just, right. You grab and refire. Yeah, you throw like an inverted kick, like groin level, and then you grab your foot, and then the outside crescent kick to their head. Oh, I love a good outside crescent. Ooh, <laughs> I was I was the leg guy. I mean, and then make it always smack to the hand. Isn't it? Yeah, see, I'm I'm six foot four with a 36 wow. inch inseam. So wow. my sensei, I remember, he's like, Scott, we're gonna teach you to master the leg. I'm like, why? He's like, because when we get you into tournaments against <laughs> against Taekwondo who live on the legs, yeah, yeah. you are gonna do great. And the I said, rule the skies. Yeah, because, like, I mean, you stick my long, crazy, ape-long legs. I joke around. I got ape arms and ape legs. Like, I stick them out there, man. You're not coming in on my, on my core body. Like, you're not getting anywhere near me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, you, you are literally listening to two guys geeking out about martial arts and business. <laughs> so, all right, so, let me, let me uh, re-solidify the timeline here. So, you had 30 years of martial arts. You, you launched nine schools. You hand them off do you still are you still an owner or do you end up selling them yeah so so after i you know i got out of the academic world and i decided i was going to dive into marketing right so i took every seminar every every class i read every book and i started opening up schools and in 2002 i got into digital marketing 
Mm. Uh, when AdWords platform hit, hit the airways, I was in it immediately. And I built my whole school on the back of that platform. I mean, I, I get oh, about- you, you already had a business to test it with. Yes. So I, I learned actually all my lessons with my own money, which wow. there's, no greater, there's no greater lesson, right? I like and that. So people started coming to me and saying, hey, can you help, help me with my business, with, my, with ours? So in 2008, I decided to open up a full-time agency with a, with a, actually it was a father of one of the kids in the kids in my school. We yeah. started talking. I looked over, he's reading Tim Ferriss's book and I went, Oh, that's a good book. We started talking. Wait, the four hour work week. What's that? The four hour work week, the bestseller. Yeah. Or? Yes. Yes. Four There's hour so many week. other books he's launched. But, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. This was the one that was just came out though. And so that, and he had an iPhone. He had the very first iPhone. I was like, what, what's that? That's cool. Next thing you know, we started a business together and we started a motility. Oh, so he was your co-founder. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let me go ahead and bring some screen sharing back up on motility here. So by the way, I love it because, and you and I were joking around before we started recording today about how, Hey, you know, we, we came up with this great branding, the whole motility concept, but like somebody else obviously already owned, you know, the why on the end. <laughs> yeah. I, I think from a graphical standpoint, I think just the I, I, I ties together nicely. So I think that's was, true. So, so you, so how did you, I got to know this. I'm a branding geek. How did you guys come up with motility? Is it all from the neuroscience component? No, no, actually he, the reason why he, we started working together is because he had a concept on a product that really was just emerging right then, which was a frameless borderless video that pops up on a website and aggravates the crap out of everybody. Right. Uh, and so that was brand new at the time. And, uh, we actually came up with software, one of the first two or three companies in the world to have that product. And it was really? called Live on, Live on Page. If you do a search for Live on Page, we're still number one for that, huh. uh, even though we don't sell it anymore. Uh, okay. it's, it's, it's built in Flash, so no one wanted it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Flash is a no-no nowadays. It's so. Uh And so, you know, he, he said, well, look, I can convert people. I can tell people what, where to go to site. I said, well, yeah, but you don't have any traffic. Hmm. So you need me to work with your clients so they can have more traffic than their site. So that's how we started working together is on this. So it was a, it was a motion product, right? It was video, it was mo movement on the website. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the name was Motility was okay. Movement. Well, and again, I was joking around about how I, I immediately, when I read this, I just thought of mobility, just because yeah. we talked about so much yeah. in fitness and training and everything else. And um, it's funny because everything you just explained from a business standpoint, I know is a no brainer, but a lot of people who are hearing this don't know that the power of digital marketing doesn't just come from, mm -hmm. as you hinted, just driving traffic. Yes. Right. Driving traffic is huge. You, you can have it's the most too. amazing site ever. And if you have no traffic going there, <laughs> yeah, it's 50, 50, it's a truly 50, 50. Yeah. Uh, so, and, so do you guys still have that balance of strengths to this day? Or do uh, you guys, you, you know what? I, I'm like the, uh, absent-minded professor, you know, I, I'm, I'm, my head's in the clouds and I'm, I'm at a strategic level all the time. Okay. He's like, well, you missed this period or you missed this comma or, you know, he's extremely detail oriented, very creative. Uh, you know, he's, he's a, he's a printing press person from years ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we do really do fill each other's strengths out, but the, uh, you know, we, we did this live on page product, which was kind of cheap and everybody raced their way to the bottom on this silly thing. Um, you know, people were selling it suddenly for thirty dollars a video, and you know, hiring people off Craigslist and selling these things. It's hard to compete against that. We had what we thought was the best version of it. Yeah. So, but I, but I ended up writing thirty to sixty second scripts for like five hundred clients over the next uh, four or five years. Wow. It means, that, and 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 I got down in there with them, and I mean, I I had to know what they were all about, what the skinny on their whole website was, what they wanted their customers to go do in the website and to write that script. And a lot of times you ask people, what do you want someone to do in, in your website? Or what do you want? And they'll say, well, I want more money. Well, I know, but you know, how are you going to get? Uh, thank you for the obvious answer. <laughs> exactly. How are we going to turn this visitor into more money? What do you want them to do in your website? And then it would just be a profound silence on the other side of the phone. Yeah. As, as they, you realize they had no idea how they were going to connect those dots. <clears throat> well, I so, think a lot, a lot of customers, they just come to experts like you or me or whatever. And they're like, hopefully. well, he, here's, here's, here's what I want. And yeah. yes, I want the money in the end. Yeah. And yeah. here's what I think I want to stand for and symbolize what my brand means. Yeah. But uh, go ahead and fill in the gaps in the middle. And it's like, well, no, there's a lot more. 
<laughs> to fill in the gaps on. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And, and so the, uh, as we kept moving along, we kept realizing, you know what? The real problem here is not the video. It's not getting results. You don't have any traffic or your website's terrible. Or, so we started expanding our services into all these other areas so we could serve the client because the video wasn't the issue. Uh, well, yeah, and your site, obviously you've got uh, paid search, you got search engine optimization, you have the web design, but you don't have all this in the beginning, right? Correct. That's, we grew in all those directions because uh, that, that, that whole product basically died a slow agonizing death. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> almost as agonizing as being forced to watch a 60 second video you didn't ask for. But yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you, I was going to say you probably could do a whole podcast on the pain of the uh, crash and burning of all the AdWords stuff. Right. I mean, so yeah. many people who had just, they, they literally were ready to pardon the term. They're ready to blow their brains out. I mean, they were just so frustrated. Uh, it was, it was just, Oh my God. I saw, I just know so many colleagues that were just burned out from the yeah. roller coaster ride. But you know, it's still uh it's still a truly amazing advertising channel that. Oh God. Yeah. I mean, 15, 20 years ago, if we could have imagined that you could own a certain keyword and make your ad come up and compete with Nike with shoes <laughs> uh, and only do it four times a day and have it shut off of the budget. We, we, we would have lost our minds. Uh, it's an amazing opportunity for everybody to play on a completely level field mm. with the biggest players in the game. So like, and again, for listeners, it's motility.com. This will all be linked in the show notes, but so out of all of this on here, right? Paid search, SEO, right. web design. Uh, I love the fact you have case studies in here. I was, I was actually looking through here earlier today. I, I love it when people do case studies because yeah. you're, you're providing free content, but this allows people to at least try to understand how you guys work and how mm -hmm. you guys document these things, not just seeing examples of success, but I think this allows them to build the relationship before they even pick up the phone or shoot you. Right, email. right. And then, and then I love the fact you actually have a free marketing help section. That's even more powerful because again, you're just, uh, you're establishing your, your knowledge base and you as an expert. So, yeah, I, 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 I made these little three minute videos. They were supposed to be one minute and I never could stop talking in a minute. So <laughs> no good. I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were, they were supposed to be the motility marketing minute that turned into the motility marketing about three minutes. Well, yeah, you got here you go. I'm on, I'm on the, uh, the free marketing help and right there, motility marketing minute. Uh, so in reality, it's more like motility marketing minutes. So yes, exactly. Maybe you've rebranded it. <laughs> well, you could actually have fun with the graphics and just make, you could have an, a, your designer just like scratch it and like scratch in an S. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Or slow the little clock down or something. I, I like know. it. I like it. So, uh, so out of all of this today, right? Because we're recording this here in 2019, you yes. still do a lot of services. What is the one that for you is just like, dude, I, I love this. This is where I like, this is where my, you know, bread and butter, this is where the meat and potatoes are, whatever you want to call it. Like, what do you, th is it a balance still of everything or do you really see a couple you know things? That you love? I don't, a lot of people do a lot of these things. And so, my favorite thing is, is you come to me and you say, here's where I want to go. I look and see, you know, we'll use the word belts again. I look and see where you're at right now and say, you know what? There's a hundred different digital marketing tactics out there and about 95 of them are going to torpedo you. They're going to mm -hmm. take your money. Someone else is going to help you take, take your money and it's not going to accomplish what you need. These are the five exact next steps you should take and help people, you know, wade through because of course there's a lot of product salesmen out there that you know they're selling seo because that's what they sell mm -hmm. even though maybe you have a product no one's looking for how can seo help you if no one's looking for it good point uh and so not too many people shoot straight uh with with the business owner and just say look you don't, you don't want this you don't want that because of this and this and this and educate the business owner so my favorite thing is is actually i've been a teacher for you know 30 some years Mm -hmm. I taught university physiology as a grad student. I love to teach. I love to educate and clarify. So that's my favorite thing is to kind of strategize, educate the business owner. So even if they leave my, you know, I'm not, they're not using me anymore. They're better than when they arrived and they can make smarter decisions about their marketing. My, uh, my, my primary client, um, I coach and train uh, some of her sales team. And the biggest thing that I teach this younger guy that I'm working with, one of them is that like, that's, you have to think about what you do and how you perform day in and day out as a professional. And you have to think about it as a legacy you're leaving behind. And a lot of people think that way, 
only as we get older. And I'll admit it, right? I'm in my 40s now, so it, it really rings more true to me now than ever. But yeah. I, I, when I hear you talking like that, that's what is ringing in my head. It's like, this yeah. guy gets it. It's about teaching the power of legacy because if you're the one person that that, that, that business owner learned five new things or even one new thing yeah. from, and they leave, and then they go maybe to your competition or they try somebody else, and that yeah. competition doesn't teach them one darn thing or – they're going to remember you. They're going to remember you. You're the one who actually took the time to teach them something yeah. and made them a more informed consumer. And I respect you know, that. I sat in a meeting a couple of weeks ago with a client. We had pitched them for, they wanted SEO. We pitched a price to them, extremely fair price based upon what I knew was going to be our actually our hours that we put in. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got to the meeting and we talked for a while, the guy said, man, I've learned more from sitting with you. I mean, you know more than any of the other agencies have pitched, but he said, here's the problem. One of them pitched at 7,000 a month, and another one pitched at 5,000 a month. You pitched us $1,500 a month. You're the lowest price. I don't understand. It, I don't, I'm, now I'm worried. And get this. Uh, we did, had that conversation. <laughs> we, we did not get the gig. I mean, even He was though, willing to pay more. What's that? He was, so he was willing to pay more. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and he said, now, can you explain why they cost so much? I said, I can totally explain it. SEO is a black box and they know that for you. Mm -hmm. They're guessing how much you're going to make from this and pricing it accordingly. I like to price it by giving the value, how much you know, work we're going to put into it. You've got a 10 page site. How can I put 50 hours a month into a 10 page site? Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, so, there's an agency that I want my, one of my other clients is like, I, I, I help them with the social media and then they have another marketing agency doing all the SEO and all that stuff. Yeah. And the interesting way they decided to build them was they said, listen, we're going to build based on performance. Like we yeah. we're willing to come in and help you overhaul this because the prior agency that was helping them really screwed them up. So I respected this newer agency because they said, no, no, no. I was like, we know your your money's tight. You got burned. So listen, we're going to get the work done. And we're going to base this on, on revenue. I like, I like that model, actually. They'll charge by, like, hey, if you're on yeah. page two, you better pay this. If you're on page one, you're going to pay this. Pay yeah, like, like, if we're not getting the job done, and you're not building. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally like that. Yeah. yeah you, guys most, most, you know, uh, I found that I, we've worked with that a couple of times and tried it out. Uh, it's, you know, you really have to work out the system. Mm -hmm. Business owners tend to like it, uh, although – um, I have to say, if you're on page two and you're paying anything, you're probably paying too much because you page two, no one's going to go there. Right. Uh, right. so, but, but, but in the end, you know, the, I guess the whole story was about, I was educating this person, which is what I consider to be the highest form of what I'm doing mm -hmm. is to empower the business owner. Right. I love that. And do they, do they, but do they get it. Do they, well, they didn't get it enough to hire me, but <laughs> they did say, hey, you know what? Come back in June. We're going to see how this one does. And That's when you tap weeks. into the library and you pull out, okay, the, the closer's guide, right? Like, great. I, 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 I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm with you, Joe, oh, because no. I've been there. I've like, dude, I put all this time. I built the relationship. And I, and I truly tell people this all the time. Sales is not transactional. It's relationships. Yes. Uh, it's not wham, bam, I'm going to close a deal today. It is, you know, you might not even get a deal today, but the big one will come. And so many sales professionals, they just want to focus on that sale now, 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 now. And unfortunately, a lot of companies that they're working for are also managing yeah. them that way. Right, right, right. And in our types of relationships, I tell people like, listen, I prefer to be looking, work, working with clients that are going to be working with me over the long haul. I'm not looking for a flash in the pan three month client because I'm going to be investing a lot of time, a lot of energy and studying your business and studying your, your market niche or whatever. And then working with your people. Like if you come in and you crash out in 60 days, it's like that's actually a waste of my time yes. and my money. I can't do it. I can't do anything for you in 60 days. What is that? Right. How many times have has a customer done that? Uh, yeah. I mean, the average stay time is, is it's pretty SEO of course does require time, right? Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> I just do you them that too. Is that something you present, help them understand that this is, yeah, I, do, I do, but are they listing? That's the question. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I just fired a client about two, you know, two months ago because a week in they were already just all over me. I, hmm. I haven't seen this yet. Why is that not there yet? I just said, uh, you know, best of luck to you. <laughs> yeah. 
I love the fact that you actually brought that up in, on this call, uh, on this uh, podcast, because I've, it's only come up a few times on some of the business themed episodes we've released, but like, you know, my own wife, she's a, a veterinary doctor for horses. And yeah. Uh, I can remember two years ago, we just got, we just got married. So, uh, and, but we were dating and I remember her complaining about this one client. And this is also a client who's slow to pay or sometimes doesn't pay. Oh, of course. But then because she's a doctor, she cares about the animals. Right. She's, she's like, well, I, I want to put the animal first. And I'm like, I love you for that, but you are still a business yeah. and it's not your responsibility to hold that person accountable to be a better person parent slash owner to that horse. And in the end, she has no problem pulling in your professional experience and using you for that. So you got to fire that person. Sometimes you just got to let it go. Because then all, because now it's not just the time you wasted, uh, the concerns about that horse, uh, the annoyance of the customer, but now it's like, Oh, and they're not paying. <laughs> like, do you, yeah. all, all the, all the writing is on the wall. And I think a lot of businesses are afraid to oh, yeah. like clients. It just depends on where you're at in your, cycle, your life cycle too, right? I mean, that's, that's a really important day when I started saying that to people, putting my big boy pants on and saying, you know what? Uh, this is not actually in our wheelhouse. We could do it, but it's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And here's somebody else who can do it far better than I can. Go mm -hmm. there. You know, I, actually, I, to, I would never turn that down before, right? That business. Well, see, I, I'm a geek about... Uh, connecting and networking. Actually, the networking world's been overused. I actually prefer the, the term nowadays. I learned this from a mentor. Uh, become a connector, not a networker. Because yeah. eventually, like you just you just drop the bomb right there. You, yeah. As you grow professionally, you grow some really strong relationships. And sometimes they are your competitors or they're like somewhat affiliated. But you, I think all true good businesses, as they mature, they really start niching themselves out. Like even though you do multiple services, you guys probably have a select type of clientele you prefer to work with. And those really, you just hinted, like the person starts becoming a needy beggar. It's like, yeah. no, like this takes time. You're up my butt. Uh, you, yeah. uh, that's not, I don't want to work with you. <laughs> but yeah, hey, if they, don't, if they don't value the creativity or other inputs, I'm, I'm yeah. out of there. Hey, but if you can you ask me, hey, somebody you knew? I don't know if I passed those people on, <laughs> but you, you know, if you came to me and said, Hey, I need someone, I need you to run my social media. I need you to, you know, put out memes and make everybody happy and do a real feel good, uh, uh, hearts and minds campaign. I'm going to say, Whoa, not me, not yeah. me. Yeah. You know, you want me to run ads in Facebook for you? I'm the guy. You yeah. want me to connect with everybody and make them all friends of yours? That's not me. Yeah. See, I'm the relationship building guy. So that's yeah. what I do with my, 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 uh, my second largest client. And, and it's funny because I've had to put him to the curb a couple of times. Yeah, I'm going to send like, him to you now. <laughs> so he, he's, he'll call, call me because he, he's on the West Coast and he'll call me like 11 o'clock at night here. Oh, and I'm gosh. like, dude, like you got to do the math in your head. It's 11 yeah. o'clock at night. Why are you calling me? And he's like, oh, uh, he's like, this person tagged me on Instagram and I don't know how to repost. Can you just go ahead and do that? And I'm like, you can send that in an email. You can have your team. I use Trello. I know you don't like technology, but you need to find somebody to follow what is in our contract and in my guidelines because moving forward, I will be ignoring your phone calls and you'll be going to voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> I have a life. I'm sorry. So yeah, I, I tell you, I worked in the auto industry for seven years uh, for a marketing company that did automotive marketing. Yeah. And that was the most horrific experience. I, you know, my phone would blow up all weekend long on Fridays, people threatening me, people cursing at me. Uh, it is just a toxic environment. And I, I swear, I still have PTSD from that whole experience. Uh, that and letting that go is not easy money wise, but uh, getting that out of my life was the best move I ever made. Well, well on that point, right? We've, we've, we've kind of at, later in this episode have kind of started really getting very philosophical, right? Very, uh, you know, <laughs> thanks to years of experience, learning when to invest the time, when is the money worth it? What, you know, where's your PTSD level at, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. With, with that type of interaction. So do you find, if you look back at where you are now to where you were before, and obviously thanks, thanks to the influence of bouncing Kung Fu and everything, do you find that you were willing to deal with more years ago? And thanks to wisdom, you've just gotten to that point? Uh, or were you willing to let stuff go in the past? I don't know. Because like in a life cycle of growing a business, sometimes, you know, when you have a new company or a new business, people are just happy to have business. So 
Yeah, you know, as you get older, I think you, you know, I've heard someone describe it as an hourglass. When you're a little kid, you're very authentic, right? You do whatever you want. You don't care what anybody thinks. And then you go through the whole middle part where you, the whole world shapes you and tells you what to do. And then when you get older, you start turning out the hourglass up again and saying, I don't care what you think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's the case or if it's, you know, I've been, I work on myself all the time. I'm always working on breakthrough, going to seminars, training, uh, reading books. But at some point I just started saying, you know what, uh, it's two o'clock and that thing that you thought you were going to get today, you're going to get tomorrow because I work out at two o'clock. I'm going to the gym. I'll be gone for two and a half hours yeah. and then it's time for me to go home. So uh, in realizing that I didn't owe everybody my life, you know, that they didn't get to have my blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point I realized that. And guess what? I found out the world continued to spin and, and people, people weren't as critical about my time as I thought they were. Uh, I love the reference. I, that, that, that was in my own head that, that, that I'm letting people down by not, by not uh, running as fast as I can. Oh, wait, so, are you a fellow, uh, we could be our own worst self-critics? Because <laughs> I'm guilty. Yeah. I, I'm guilty, man. Uh, I mean, I, I, thank, thank God, like, see, so my wife, she's a, a realist, and I'm a visionary, right? So, uh, but I, I, I know, in, t- in certain situations, I can just cut right to the chase and get, get it done. But I am very hard on myself. I, oh, I like to have things done right, you know? And maybe not at your, like your business partner level where he was a former printing press guy and he's just like crossing T's dot in the eyes. But I will yeah. say visually, I could pick up on stuff left and right. I find spelling errors and grammar, grammar errors like in no time. Yeah. Uh, so it's even more frustrating if I actually let one slip on my own content. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't look closely at any of my emails, okay? <laughs> well, so I love, the, I love the reference to the hourglass concept because you're so, so right on this. And I, I want to make sure that as we're coming to the end of the episode that our, our listeners do take that away because I'm taking that away as a great reminder that, uh, you know, I did care too much in my 20s what everybody else mm-hmm. thought. And I was working my way up the corporate ladder because I'm the farm kid that – you know, was still trying to figure out how to finish a degree, but I was working my way up and I was in, I I was moving into management into analyst roles and I had, I didn't have my degree yet. So I was making more money than my friends coming out of college and they couldn't figure out why. And I'm like, cause I worked my ass off. That's why. (laughs) Um, But the point there is that uh, the one side effect of that is like, I call it the money to brains ratio (laughs) is that, you know, the money starts going up, but the brains are falling out my butt. So yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) They're not necessarily related, are they? No, and I and I can uh, and I can thank that that hotshot experience too. Like right before I left to be, uh, once I decided that I was going to go do this firefighting adventure, I, I said like, I'm not doing this until I close the education chapter and I get that degree done. And then you know now the resume looks amazing, right? Because I've got the check marks for the the, the yeah. BS degree, the dual major, psychology, marketing. I have the great career history, and then all of a sudden I'm like dropping a bomb, right? Everybody, all my professional colleagues were like, what are you doing? Like you, you it's done now. And now you're going to leave and go yeah. do this. And I said, yeah, cause I don't care what you think. Yeah. This is what's ringing true to my heart right here, right now. And I was like, what if this is what I meant to do the rest of my life? Yeah. And that was such an epiphany, like being just not caring what everybody else thought was boom. Like it was like a bomb going off in my head. Um, and, hey, and- can I share a story? Can share a martial arts story for us martial oh, arts geeks please, here on this? Please. Yes. Uh, when I got my fifth degree black belt, that's, that's at the point in our system where we're called master at that level. Okay. So, you know, every time I walk past my certificate hanging on the wall at the school, I'm just like hanging my head down. Oh, my God. You know, what does that even mean? Oh, I got to get to work. I don't deserve that. Mm. Uh, I've got to figure out what that means to master something. So I kind of came up with this whole plan of these other teachers that I had. I respected them all for different skills that they had. And so I came up with workouts, right? Okay. I'm going to do this workout to be a lot more like that guy. I'm going to do this workout to be more like that guy over there. And I'll be like the superhuman combo of all these people. And it took me about two weeks to go, this is the stupidest plan I've ever had. I'm going to be nothing but a shadow of all of these people. I'm never going to be you're a, you're a master. You can now get your own vision. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the, the big question was, was, Hey, wait a minute. There's something that I do that none of these people, and how am I ever going to exceed these people around me if I'm always just trying to be kind of like them, Mm. right? I'm going to exceed them as something that they're not even a master at. And so that was a huge step in my life as I realized uh, I'm going to find out what I'm best at and become even better at it. 
and I'm going to strengthen my weaknesses, but I'm going to accentuate what I'm really good at. And so, I mean, that's what I hear you saying right now, which is, you know, you controlled your own destiny in those moments and said, well, I'm doing this because this is me. Yeah. I, I, and I'd always been a, kind of more of a, I had been growing this risk taking side of my life, which it brought me energy and it brought me power. But it's like, you know, people always knew that about me, but it was that epiphany where it's like, I don't, oh, wow. Like, I don't give a crap what you think. Yeah this is what is going to make sense to me. And maybe it's not what I meant to do the rest of my life. And obviously it wasn't, but it created so many powerful shifts in yes. what is now being channeled today. You're like I wasn't an entrepreneur before. Now I am. Yes. I didn't have clients before. Now I am, you know, uh, I've done one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. So now lots of things that happen day to day really don't phase me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like, that. Like, oh, perspectives, isn't like, it? I, I've stared down a wall of fire as tall as trees. I'm like, okay, yeah, I've been there, done that. So this isn't yeah. that bad, right? Um, it's, no, it's, exactly. it's, it's like you putting 30 years into Kung Fu. It's like, come on, man. Like if you could do that level of dedication and still have that focus and dedication, I, I feel like you could just do anything. <laughs> well, you know, what's awesome is when I made that decision to be myself, actually, um, I now see other people who haven't gotten there, gotten there yet. And they're just parroting back things that they've heard others say They're They're, they're saying what they've read. And, and when I teach, it's all mine. Ooh. Everything I say comes from me and my own discoveries and my own heart, uh, like which it. who can take that from you. Right. That's beautiful. I mean, that's, that's really powerful because like that's that's when you and i i, I wish like if that's one thing that could be pat taken out of this episode that i'm taking away that i hope our listeners are too is like it, it, and i think what you've just helped us understand i've also kind of shared is that it's not going to happen overnight like we're not we're, you're not going to just that's it i'm going to do what he just said it, it does take time you don't know when it's going to click but when it clicks it's powerful man you got to listen to it yeah it's a it's a one-way train it moves slow yeah but it's but it took you all those years to reach that masterful point. Yeah. And now you yeah. have the confidence, you have the ability to say, wait, no, this is what I bring forth to the world. This is what yeah. is going to stand out. This is me and my power. And this is how I'm going to tr even more help uh, 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 other people that you're like in your dojos or whatever. So, yeah. And when you remember that and you walk in the door with that passion, yeah. uh, then you become a channel, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because uh, there's that law of attraction. People are drawn. Yeah. To strength and confidence. Yeah, you uh, light the room up with that energy. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like you and your business partner. You said you actually hinted this earlier in the show about strengths, and I love talking about the book uh, Strengths Finder 2.0 by Tom uh, Tom Rath. I like that too. Yeah, love the book, right? I do tell people all the time to focus on the natural strengths. Figure out what you bring forth. It doesn't mean you stop working on some weaknesses, but I'll tell right. you, as far as flow of energy it is a hell of a lot easier to work on what you bring forth. What is your strengths and then outsource the weaknesses Absolutely. or in your, in your case? Well, dude, I don't care about this, but my business partner is amazing at it. Yeah, yeah. bro. You handle that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, uh, I don't want to call him a bean counter, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I no, no, might she, listen to this episode. I don't know. I, I have no problem. I've joked around this show before. Like my wife, she grew up with a CFO accounting father. <laughs> That girl knows more about money than I'll ever know. So yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she is now my positive influence when it comes Those to money. Those people frighten me. It, it, yeah. I, I'm good <laughs> at spending. She's good at <laughs> saving, investing. So we, we, this is a, a good, that's, that's this good. Is a good thing. This is a good thing. <laughs> well, listen, this has been a powerful episode, man. We're, we're at the top of the time. Uh, I know you want to go running. So let me do one last little screen share here. But something I ask my guest co-host to do, and I know – Everything, your lifestyle back, you'll no problem closing it out. But I like to give you guys the final words of the show. So, um, and it, it can be whatever the heck you want. Uh, but really, most of the time, people are just like, oh, here, here's an all encompassing message you kind of want to leave behind. It could wow. be something from Kung Fu. It could be I'm something from. That. Uh <laughs> no, that's the point. You know, it's because I don't want people overly planning for it because usually it's something that really means something to you and it just comes right yeah. up. But it's like, you know what? Yeah, this is something I like. So, uh, but again, ladies and gentlemen, while he's getting ready for that, motility dot com there's a lot of cool stuff on their site besides the free marketing tips besides the case studies that i recommend i love the fact you show off some really nice sites here by the way on your actual work page because Thanks. you guys got some nice design work so your design team is kicking butt i like it now that being said i don't know man how do you want to close it out 
doesn't have to be crazy. Uh, you know, you know, I'll tell you what, I, the, the lesson that I would carry, because I'm sure I have, we have a lot of entrepreneurs listening, right? Sure. Um, and whether, whether they're that, no, no matter what they're trying to do in their life or you're trying to do in your life, um, I guarantee you 100% success that you will reach everything that you want if you just don't quit. Mm. Um, when, when my students come to me and say, I need advice, I'm going to start a business. We, we sit down, we look at it like belts. I said, look, uh, you know, in six months you can't give up on this because you're only a blue belt. Uh, what, what does your business goal look like when you're a brown belt? What's it, what are we going to call a brown belt? What are we going to call a black belt? And so I asked my people, where are you on your 10 year plan? Nice. Because if it takes you 10 years and heck in, in martial arts, it may take you 15 to 20 years to call yourself a master. Well, you certainly wouldn't drop out in, in a, in a year if you had a little problem learning a kata or something, because you're like, well, yeah, but you dude, you're only in it for a year so far. Where are you on your 10 year plan? Mm. And so it applies, of course, doubly so in business. And I see people come all the time and, you know, they six months in, they, they quit trying what they're doing because it's not working yet, but they haven't paid the dues yet. No, they're trying to do 10 years in one year. And the only way to do that is to throw a hell of a lot of money at it uh, <laughs> or time. So you either got to throw it at time or money at it. Yeah. If you have the freedom to be able to go on sabbatical and for the next year, just focus 100% yeah. on business that's amazing yeah. but we we do live in reality or you got an nest egg you know either way i, I mean I, I everything i started is always started as a side hustle so yeah. um, i love your point in that man you, you got to establish the vision before you can break it down into the steps necessary to pull it off right love it well listen hang tight i want to give you a proper goodbye off the air ladies and gentlemen that is we'll go professional again dr joe Schaefer, motility.com uh, obviously we geeked a lot of today on martial arts, the power of that structure, that education, that formation. And, uh, we talked a lot about Kata. We got, we got, uh, <laughs> Atkins Razor. Uh, we got the four hour work week bomb from Tim Ferriss. That's a great, great book. It's in my library. It's in his library. And, uh, I love the little reference to the hourglass. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen, think about that hourglass uh, chapter of this episode. And again, all this stuff will be back on the blog article for the show notes. So if you forget this stuff, don't worry about it. We always have timestamp show notes throughout the episode. So thanks for tuning in to another powerful of the fuel episode. And again, make sure you check out motility.com. And again, we're here to fuel your health, your business and your lifestyle. And Dr. Joe definitely did that today. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.